So we're going to start uh, by a general introduction. Uh, then we'll go to uh, the use case that is Enedis use case. I'll describe it further. Then uh, a few words about how to process uh, LiDAR data using our products. And then how to increase your productivity. Let's start so with the general introduction. So the use case I'm about to present you is a joint project between Yellowscan, uh, DLMO 3D, and Enedis. Enedis is the client, uh, Yellowscan is the solution and da data provider, and DLMO 3D did all the processing and uh, the results gathering. So the needs of Enedis uh, were data on the power line, obviously, uh, for line sagging, ripped cables, object falls, etc. Uh, but they also wanted vegetation data around and under and above the power line for a tree fall logic analysis and uh, vegetation encroachment. So about UAV LiDAR surveys, they are not meant to override uh, manned missions. It's more of a complementary survey that is adapted to small area surveys that has rapid deployment uh, and that will provide you with uh, high density LiDAR data uh, on small data sets. So it gives you low disturbance in costs, obviously, and you have access to more difficult areas. So a few words about Enedis. It's the new name of ERDF, which is the, the French distribution uh, ele of electricity in France. Uh, it's the largest electricity distribution owner uh, in France. It has 35 million clients. So they own, as you can see, 95% of the network, uh, the medium and low voltage network in France. The high voltage is um, RTE, a different company. Uh, so the total size of the network is one, over 1 million kilometers. And every year they survey about 1,000, uh, 100,000 kilometers. Let's dive into the, to the use case now, uh, what exactly what, what, was, what, what, what was the pain point that they had? Uh, currently, they do the mapping by foot. Uh, it's a visual inspection of the areas, uh, but they had a few problems. They, they still had hard to access areas, uh, and the visual inspection was really lacking precision and uh, accurate information. And also, it was really, really long, so you can forget about human. Uh, and by foot inspection. So what about helicopter survey? Well, they, they run an annual global survey of the lines, but the fully booked service providers and uh, the low reactivity of the helicopter survey, which is only annual, makes it impossible for them to use it. So UAV LiDAR then, what about it? Well, it will provide high density LiDAR data, which is good for the power line, uh, it, it is adapted to small area surveys, so they can do targeted surveys if they want to. It has very fast deployment, as I said earlier, and you have access to that difficult areas because you're flying above it, but not too, too high above it. So it looks like the perfect fit. So on this use case, uh, the flights were conducted by Product Air, uh, and uh, the post-processing to get to the, the, to the data was done by eCopter. They used the DJI Spreading Wings S1000. Uh, the sensor was a yellow scan surveyor, and the average flight height was 30 meters above ground level. So this is one small portion of the, of the data set that they acquired. As you can see, the power lines in the middle here. Uh, and the final processing and the analysis uh, were done by Dielmo. So what Dielmo did uh, using the DMO Open LiDAR software, was first vectorized the, the power line with an auto snap feature, uh, subsample the point cloud to only a buffer zone around that power line, and then uh, run an automated classification of that subsample point cloud to uh, extract all the profiles and all the information they needed. And then they get to the results. The first result that they, that, uh, they provided was the vegetation encroachment. Uh, you want to detect and analyze the risks around your power line uh, based on your voltage. So Enedis defined a chart, as you can see here, uh, of the distance to the power line depending on the situation of the vegetation around the power line. 
So what they did was a, a global mapping and a colored point cloud, depending on the, the risks that the vegetation was showing uh, regarding to the power line. The second one is a threefold risk evaluation. So based on the, on the classified point cloud, they can generate a DTM, so a digital terrain model, uh, and a DSM, which is a dense surface, uh, digital surface model. And they can, from that, get the height of each tree. And based on the location of the power line, see easily, as you can see here, rather easy, if the tree is going to fall on the power line on the worst case scenario. Like that, they can define the pruning really easily and locate which tree is going to be a problem. Uh, third type of results is for line sagging. So using the same data in the entry, you can calculate the ground to wire distance. Uh, so that algorithm is its own by DLMO, again. Uh, and the output is just an output uh, Excel spreadsheet where it says between pine and 44 and 45, there's a line that's way too low and things like that. All the hazards are gathered then on an R2 photo uh, and draped on it. As you can see here, the red zones are usually dangerous. And uh, so here are all the results that were provided to Anadis by DLMO. So I talked about uh, processing LiDAR data, uh, which can be a very bad word uh, nowadays, but it's not as hard as it seems. Uh, at Yellowscan, we develop and integrate uh, turnkey solutions for LiDAR. And all you have to do is press that yellow button that you see on every device to start your acquisition and press it again to stop it. It's as easy as that. Um, the, the, the point cloud generation is also streamlined. We have right now a plugin in QGIS where you will enter your file name, change the projection so you have a georeference point cloud, and give it what we call an SBET. SBET uh, stands for Smooth Best Estimated Trajectory. So it's post-processed using PPK uh, logic to have a, uh, a best trajectory. And then you will just select the lines that are of interest to you and click on process lines. When you do that, it will generate a point cloud for each line in LAS format, which is a standard open uh, format, and combine the IMU data and the scanner data so you get a, a last point cloud. And all of this process is maximum five minutes. You can also tweak a bit. So all our units are calibrated uh, when you get one. So you can enter the calibration angles here. And, you, and all the scanners that we have, except the mapper two, are uh, scanning on a 360 degree basis. So you can select the range of points that you want to use and only process this much point. And then the title of the presentation was Increasing Productivity. So to get a better productivity, you could switch from the surveyor, which was used, to the newer Surveyor Ultra, which is the Velodyne VLP32C integration. The weight is not that different. It goes from 1.6 kilograms to 1.7, but the rest of the features is pretty much double. You have twice as much max range, 120 meters is approximately 400 feet, which is the maximum flight height in the US right now. The number of beams is doubled, so you have a better vegetation penetration potential. Uh, it's a two echo solution, it's not written here, but it's worth mentioning. And the number of points per second is doubled, so you have way more density. And it's a perfect fit for a fixed wing for long endurance flight. And as you get more points, you can fly faster. And as you fly faster, you also want to fly higher which is possible using the Ultra. So you still get a great density, uh, even at high speed and high altitude flights. Uh, for example, I, I ran a quick math here. If you fly at 65 kilometers per hour, which is about 30 miles per hour, at 80 meters above ground level, you still get an average of 55 points per square meter. The approximate swath, which is the trace on the ground that you will get from the scanning, is 350 meters. We'll see that later. So it 
really enables you a higher flight altitude, which means way safer flights because you can fly really above your power line and the larger swath will give you more info about the surroundings of uh, your flight and your corridor. Faster flight speed obviously gives you more coverage per flight. Um, and for example, an integration example is the Quantum Systems Tron. As you can see, it's, it fits perfectly in the nose of the plane and it's a VTOL, so it, it behaves like a helicopter to take off and land. VTOL stands for vertical takeoff and landing and then behaves like a fixed wing in flight. So here are a few results uh, from the Ultra. So this is a, a 80 meter flight above a power line in France. This is not a, a football field, this is a rugby field. And the total swath from here to there, which is actually usable, is 320 meters. On the, on the power line itself, you have a pretty decent description of the wire, around 40 points per meter on the wire. So that's how you increase productivity. And if you have any more questions, feel free to join us on booth uh, 1008. Uh, that was, uh, I'm Thibaut Capra. You have Cliff Holly, our uh, new business developer, uh, development manager in the US because we're a French-based company, but we just opened uh, a new office uh, here in Salt Lake City, Utah, to get closer customer support hours for you guys. Thank you for your attention.